If you're trying to break into cloud engineering, these five beginner projects will literally transform your resume from invisible to irresistible. And I'm not talking about those boring static website tutorials that everyone else is building. These are real world projects that solve actual business problems that will have employers scrambling to hire you. I'm Suleiman, I've worked in tech for over a decade and today I run my own AI cloud security consultancy. And through my academy, I've helped more than 600 students learn cloud and AI. Now look, I've seen thousands of resumes and I can tell you exactly exactly what hiring managers want to see. These projects will make you stand out from the crowd and you don't need to be an expert to build these. I'm going to walk you through each one step by step so even if you've never touched the cloud before, you can follow along and build something incredible. Project number one, the cloud cost calculator. Let's start with a problem that's literally keeping small business owners awake. They're getting these massive, confusing AWS bills every month and have absolutely no idea what they're paying for. I've personally consulted for companies that got over $30,000 in bills when they expected it to be under $10,000 and they couldn't really figure out where their money was going. Here is why this happens. AWS has over 200 different services and each one charged differently. Some charged by the hour, some by the gigabyte and some by the number of requests. With this project, you will create a cost tracking and alert system that translates those confusing bills into something visible that owners can see. Let me explain each piece step by step. Firstly, we use CloudWatch, which is AWS's monitoring service. CloudWatch automatically tracks every penny that you spend across all your AWS services and stores this information in easy to read charts and graphs. The beautiful thing about CloudWatch is that it's always running in the background. You don't need to manually check your spending, it's already collecting that data automatically. Next, we create CloudWatch alarms. You set spending thresholds, maybe $50, $100, or even $200, $200, and if your monthly bill hits any of these amounts, the alarm immediately fires off a warning. When an alarm triggers, it connects to SNS, which stands for Simple Notification Service. When your AWS bill hits $100, SNS can instantly send emails, text messages, or even phone calls to whoever needs to know. We then create a dashboard using S3, which is AWS storage service. S3 can host websites and not just store files, which makes it perfect for creating simple dashboards. This dashboard shows spending into categories. Instead of S3 standard storage, $5.67, it shows file storage $5.67. We can also add a Lambda function that creates weekly spending reports. Lambda is AWS's serverless computing service. You write code that runs automatically without managing any servers. This Lambda function compares this week's spending to last week's and then highlights any sort of big changes. Why do employers absolutely love this project? Well, firstly, you're solving a real financial problem that affects every AWS customer. Secondly, you are demonstrating that you understand cost optimization, which is one of the most valuable skills in cloud engineering. Project number two, the automatic backup system. Now let's tackle a problem that's even more terrifying for business owners, data loss. The scary truth is that most small businesses have terrible backup systems or no backups at all. They might occasionally copy files to an external drive, but these manual processes are unreliable and often forgotten during busy periods. This project creates a bulletproof automatic backup system that runs without any human intervention. We start with S3, AWS storage service which is incredibly reliable. When you store a file in S3, AWS automatically makes multiple copies and stores them in different physical locations. Even if an entire data center gets hit by a tornado, your files are safe because there are copies of them elsewhere. The first step is creating S3 bucket, which are storage containers. We create different buckets for different types of data. One can be called documents for backups. Another can be called photos backups. Another could be called database backup. This organization makes it easy to find specific files when you need to restore something. Next, we set up the automatic backup process. Business owners install a small script on their computers that runs every night at 2 a.m. when they're not working. This script identifies important files and automatically uploads them to S3. We then configure S3 with versioning. This means if someone accidentally deletes a file or saves over an important document, S3 will keep the old version. You can then go back and restore any file from any previous day, but we don't want to back up costs to spiral out of control. So we add lifecycle policies. These are the rules that automatically move older files to cheaper storage classes after 30 days. For peace of mind, we use SNS to send confirmation notifications. Every morning, business owners will get a simple email saying, last night's backup completed successfully, 247 files were backed up. Project number three, the website uptime monitor. Every business with a website lives in a fear of this nightmare scenario. Their website goes down and they don't find out. Every minute of downtime is costing them sales, damaging their reputation and frustrating potential customers. This project creates enterprise-grade website monitoring. And we start with creating a Lambda function that contains a simple 
simple script to check website health. This script visits your website every five minutes and performs three critical checks. Firstly, it checks if the website loads at all. Sometimes servers crash or networks have problems and websites become completely unreachable. Secondly, it checks how quickly the website loads. Even if your website is technically up, if it takes 30 seconds to load, customers will leave. Thirdly, it checks if the website is showing the right content. Sometimes websites load but show error messages or completely wrong content. When any of these checks fail, the Lambda function immediately triggers an SNS notification. Within seconds, the business owner gets an email and text messages saying exactly what's gone wrong. But monitoring isn't useful without any sort of historical data, so we need to store all the test results in DynamoDB, which is AWS's fast database service. Every time our Lambda function checks the website, it records the results, timestamp, response time, success or failure, and any other error message. We then create a simple dashboard hosted in S3, so it shows metrics like 99% uptime this month, average response times, or three incidents this month, all result within 15 minutes. Project number four, the customer inquiry manager. Here is a problem that every business faces, but most handle terribly. Customer emails and contact form submissions get lost in overflow inboxes. Important sales queries get buried under spam, and response times are are inconsistent. This project creates a professional customer inquiry management system that ensures no customer message ever gets lost or ignored. We start with an EC2 instance, which is basically a virtual computer running in AWS. This computer will host our customer inquiry management application 24-7. On this EC2 instance, we build a simple web application using a framework like Flask for Python or Express for Node.js. These frameworks make it easy to create web applications without starting from scratch. And when someone fills out a contact form on your website, instead of just sending a regular email, the form data gets sent to our web application running on EC2. Here is where we use AI to make the system smart. Our web application sends the message content to Amazon Bedrock, which is AWS's AI service that gives you access to language models. Bedrock reads the entire message and then understands what the customer actually wants, not just the individual keywords. For example, a message saying, I'm interested in learning more about your premium package pricing for my growing team gets correctly identified as a sales inquiry. The AI categorizes each query as sales, support, billing, or general, and assigns urgency levels based on the actual business impact. All inquiry data gets stored in RDS with MySQL, which is AWS managed database service and stores data in tables. So we'll create a simple database tables for customers, inquiries, and AI generated categories. Based on the data categorization, our application triggers different notifications using SES. Amazon email service. Anything critical sends immediate emails to business owners or key employees. Standard inquiries generate daily summary emails. We create a simple admin dashboard as part of our web application so anyone can view all inquiries. For automatic follow-ups, we can use CloudWatch events to trigger daily checks. CloudWatch events calls our application, which queries the database for unresolved inquiries and then uses Bedrock to generate appropriate follow-up messages. Project number five, the AI inventory tracker. Small retailers, restaurants, and service businesses struggle to keep track of their inventory, leading to two costly problems. Firstly, they run out of popular items at the worst possible times, like during rush hours. Secondly, they waste money on slow moving inventory. This project creates a powerful inventory management system that prevents both these expensive problems using EC2, RDS MySQL, and AI automation. So we start with an EC2 instance that hosts our inventory management web application. Think of this like creating a private website that only the business owner and and the staff can access. On this EC2 instance, we build a web application using a framework like Flask for Python or Express for Node.js. We then use RDS MySQL as our database. This handles all of the inventory data that we need products, suppliers, sales records, and stock levels. Business owners or employees can log into the web application to add new products, update quantities when they receive shipments, set minimum stock levels for each item, and view complete sales history. But here is where things get really smart with AI. The system can automatically update inventory when sales happen. To do this, we create a simple connection between the business sales system and our inventory application. When a sale happens, whether through a cash register, online store, or mobile app, that system sends a quick message to our ease to application saying what was sold. Our application receives this message and immediately updates the stock count in our MySQL database. For retail stores, when they scan a barcode at checkout, that product's count decreases instantly in our system. This eliminates manual inventory tracking and keeps stock levels accurate in real time. Then we can add AI intelligence with Amazon Bedrock. Instead of just setting basic alerts when stock is low, our system uses AI to analyze sales patterns and then predict future demand. For example, instead of just saying you're running low on item A, 
the AI might say, based on last month's sales patterns, you'll run out of item A in three days. We recommend ordering 75 units from your user supplier to last through the expected busy period next week. We can then use CloudWatch events to trigger these AI analysis tasks daily. The system sends email alerts through SES that include not just what to reorder, but when to order it and how much, based on AI predictions of future sales. At the end of each business day, the system generates an AI-powered summary showing not just what happens, but what's likely to happen next and what actions to take. Now, just building these projects alone isn't enough. You have to document your projects on LinkedIn and share exactly what you're learning because more than 95% of recruiters go to LinkedIn first when they're looking to hire. And when it comes to interviews, instead of just saying you know how to use AWS Lambda and DynamoDB, you can say that I build a system that prevents businesses from losing sales due to inventory shortages and saves money by identifying slow moving stock. That's the difference between a beginner who knows some AWS services and a professional cloud engineer who can solve business problems. And that's exactly what's going to help you get hired. As always, I'm rooting for you. Good luck.